Okay, friendos, welcome back. We're talking today about CCP Games Project Awakening. Who's CCP Games? It's the people that make EVE Online, uh, the company that was purchased some years ago by Pearl Abyss, the South Korean company that makes Black Desert Online. And they are making a new, um, they're calling it a persistent survival experience set in the EVE universe. Um, and this is going to be a, you know, hold your applause, a blockchain based game. Now, obviously that already turns off most people. Uh, I'm going to go in with an open mind for one reason and one reason only. They've, you know, proven over a long period of time now that they can actually make a game with a real in-game economy. And I guess if you take the word blockchain out of it, EVE Online has, has basically operated almost on a real money economy for like a decade now. So if any company has the experience and the tenure um, to make something like this work, it's probably CCP Games. So it'll be a good, I guess, test, uh, a proof of concept basically of whether or not it can even work remotely, if it's feasible in any conceivable way. Uh, unless they just fuck it up massively, in which case we'll have to wait to see if somebody else can. So, from uh, Reykjavik, Iceland, March 13th, 2024. Today, CCP Games is excited to reveal the first details about Project Awakening and announce Phase 3, the next closed playtest for the in-development title, set within the EVE universe, starting on May 21st, 2024. With a 26-year studio history... Damn, I didn't, I didn't know it had been that long. Project Awakening represents the next step in CCP Games' journey to create virtual worlds more meaningful than real life. Designed with player empowerment at its heart, Project Awakening, Awakening is being developed as a single shard survival experience built upon the principles of freedom, consequence, and mastery within a living universe, a universe that will evolve from the actions and efforts of its players. So I don't like EVE Online, just going to throw that one out there, because the game just doesn't feel like a game most of the time when you're playing it i've tried to get into weave because it's kind of like it marries some of the things i really like about mmos um but the controls and being a spaceship as opposed to being a person i just i just can't get into it i never have been able to but obviously the open world pvp the politics the consequences uh, I like all that stuff. Space, sci-fi, I like that stuff too. But EVE Online as a game has been, you know, up and down with population. It's on Steam. You can check the numbers. Um, it's off Steam as well. So obviously these are not accurate. But over time, it's proven to be one of the most long-running, successful, not in like a World of Warcraft blowing records out the, out the water, but just a game that has a niche, fulfills that niche, is enjoyed by hundreds of thousands, millions of players day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year for a very long time. So whenever a company with that tenure says we're making something new and obviously it being a single shard, which basically means one big server where uh, everyone's in there together. Yeah, cool. I like that. Uh, now let's get into the next parts that's going to obviously bother some people. As a single shard survival experience, Project Awakening is set in the dark expanse of space where civilization has decayed into the ruin of its own ambition. Players will explore a hostile and dangerous cosmos as they fight to survive against what remains an attempt to rebuild a broken world. Now, hopefully, with being survival and talking about being on a broken world, it's not in space, in spaceships. I always feel like Eve kind of missed a trick in not doing more stuff within the universe of their game that you could play the sort of interconnected with the rest of eve if you didn't want to be a person that flew around as a spaceship doing stuff having like i know this was i guess talked about i don't know if it ever came to fruition but having you know games based on planets where there's you know a first person shooter or something like that and then uh, that somehow contributing or at least feeling like it's within the same universe so if this is kind of like that cool so powered by Carbon Development Platform and Mud by Lattice, CCP Games is creating a persistent world bound by digital physics where compostability and programmability will enable players to build and collaborate on top, outside of, and within the emerging game environment, unlocking boundless creativity for third-party development via blockchain technology and cryptography. Now, I know what some of those words mean, but when you put all of that into a sentence, 
I don't know what the fuck this means. I, I, I think this means they're talking about people being able to create things outside the game and put it into the game. I could be wrong. Maybe it's a case of like being able to build tools that then can interact with like, uh, for instance, like an API, um, but not an API uh, because it's blockchain. Similar concept maybe. To participate in the development of Project Awakening, players can now apply, apply to join Phase 3. The next closed playtest starting on May 31st, 2024. Phase 3 will allow players to engage with programmable game systems and build their own features and functionality within the world. So I guess this sort of makes sense. If you look at it like this, there's a game called something, Space something, Stationeer, something like that. It was from Dean Hall, you know, the guy who perpetually releases early access games and then within a couple of years moves on to another early access game and leaves the other one to never really come to fruition in the way it should have done and is never really the thing he promised it was going to be. He made one that was basically like he took the control scheme the very outdated control scheme of uh, space station 13 where it's like left hand right hand you have to swap between your hands you have inventory slots and things like that he took that game and they had like a scriptable programmable language i might be mixing two games up i don't think i am it's been a long time since i played that because again it was kind of uh lackluster at the beginning and, and didn't really get finished as far as i remember you could program within the game you could actually write scripts and you could do that to make airlock systems and basically you were building complex systems that needed real world calculations of how stuff worked like if you were going to build a solar power um farm or whatever you had to actually program in how the the panels would detect where the sun is and move and things like that otherwise they'd just be mostly useless whenever they wouldn't turn themselves so maybe that's like this um programmable game systems build their own features and functionality within the world i guess if that's true that's that's really cool um obviously with it being blockchain you mention that word and people lose their fucking mind so i don't know how popular this is going to be as a concept but I'm open to the idea. It is what it is. As part of the playtest, an online hackathon will enable builders to showcase their ideas to CCP, with the winning teams given the opportunity to visit the studio headquarters in Iceland. Cool. Uh, as part of today's new CCP Games, is also excited to announce its commitment to making the Carbon development platform open source, allowing programmers and game developers to access the Carbon game engine framework and additional components for free. We've been co-developing games with players for over 20 years by making Carbon development platform open source. We're now taking the next steps in this journey. Our vision is to open up game development to everyone. Cool. Yeah, a good goal. Uh, whether you are a player, developer, or programmer, we want to empower you in building virtual worlds. As part of this, we're excited to reveal the first details about Project Awakening, which embodies this philosophy. Players will have a new series of tools at their disposal to add their own features and functionality to the experience, a new way of leaving their mark on the world. If you are a builder and want to be part of this journey, then apply to Phase 3 and join the new extension of the EVE universe. I've always liked the idea of being able to and i guess this as a segue um kind of works with like the idea of fucking play to earn the dreaded term which i absolutely hate because it just doesn't make sense what's always made more sense to me other than like you play the video game and you do intensive in-game labor for pennies while someone who bought in earlier uh, makes all the money because you're on their land or you're using their land in some way or you've had to rent from them because they speculated early on when no game existed I think that fundamentally cannot work as a concept. But thinking about it, I've said a few times, I'll probably go in depth in a in a video on my new cryptocurrency channel, uh, where I talk about basically one of the, the things nobody I've ever seen talk about, one of the concepts of blockchain that could work in gaming, but will probably never be adopted because companies don't want you to. So I'm not gonna go further in depth on it in this video, but something I've always thought about with games taking services that you do in the real world for like a hobby or a job or whatever and then being able to do something with that service in a game such as let's say you're a programmer and then the game has a system within whereby you can automate things um, and it needs code to be able to run efficiently you write the code in the game and then you sell the schematic or whatever to people or you provide a service where you show up and make it work perhaps without even revealing how you've done it to them things like that actually sound cool to me as an idea of being able to you know you can do this with art you can do this with uh, programming i don't know where else you could take it but something like that to provide value um and get value as somebody you know playing the game 
that makes way more sense to me. And obviously something we already have a proven model of working. I mean, you look at VR chat, people pay tons of money to other people um, to make rigging and uh, whatever, you know, animations for models that they're going to use within VR chat. Second life, people have been doing that forever where they're, you know, creating things that people want to buy on the second life uh, marketplace and then use within the game i think adding value like that to a persistent game that people are playing cool you know I, i'm not against that obviously when you introduce the idea of blockchain even as a word i think the bias immediately comes out but as an idea if that's what they're saying if that's what this is yeah uh, as a as a concept cool we're excited to bring the carbon development platform to our creative community allowing them to harness the power of the carbon game engine we look forward to sharing more details and insight on how the public will be able to access carbon in the future we're proud to reveal our partnership with ccp games interacting mud with project awakening will enable the creation of an autonomous world bound by digital physics a universe where actions have consequences which exists on rules as concrete as our own reality so yeah we don't really have anything on their website to go over um, as far as i'm aware there's no gameplay footage there's no trailer there's a blog post here about time being wrong and a bit of a, a riddle or uh, some kind of teaser but we don't really have much of anything to go on i remember reading this a long time ago yeah back last year or almost a full year ago uh, where they were saying you know they they'd raised a bunch of money for a, a new triple a game and i think even back at that point it was discussed as being a a blockchain based game now they've obviously not talked about things that people really need to know when evaluating whether or not they should completely ignore this or reserve judgment or, or whatever it's going to be and that is are they going to sell shit prior to the game coming out is it going to be another you know cynical cash grab i, I wouldn't expect it to be because this is a legit company because obviously we know in crypto most of the time when a crypto game's made before it even releases they're selling millions tens of millions hundreds of millions of dollars worth of just shy you know land vehicles spaceships star citizen you know, you know you're describing the same thing currencies whatever it's going to be considering they've not mentioned it um it does make me wonder but obviously we're not going to find out from some random blog posts that they don't really mention anything to do with that seems like they've done some testing and they're you know ramping testing up now so i wonder how close this is to being done either way um obviously something that you want to reserve judgment for until you know specifically how it's even going to look, how it's going to play, how the blockchain aspect interacts with it. There might not even be currency. They might not be selling anything. It might just be a case of like the EVE token or whatever it's called that you, please stop scratching my stuff, that you use to redeem for subscriptions and people use as like a currency within within EVE. It might just be that, but not constrained to um, their marketplace and something you can transfer amongst yourselves outside of the game. But whatever, who knows? Uh, I guess we'll find out at some point. Thanks for watching. Links to other channels in the video description. And buy game subs. Which one are we picking up today? Sour Apple. This one's a fucking banger. Sour Apple. I actually need some more of that. Link in video description for that. Discount for you. Kickback for me. Win-win. And I'll see you next time. Peace.